Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez, and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. The city is once again on the map, the digital map that is, a second place winner in the Digital City Survey. This honor recognizes cities for use of technology to improve citizen services and transparency and to encourage citizen engagement. Kansas City moved up from third to second place due to our open data ordinance, smart city initiatives like interactive kiosks, smart streetlights, and 50 blocks of free public Wi-Fi, as well as our effort to bridge the digital divide. In the city's population category, only Virginia Beach, Virginia beat us. City staff celebrated America Recycles Day by holding a plastic bag and battery recycling event for employees. Drop-off sites were inside City Hall and the Water Services Administration Building. Casey's Green Team sponsored the event. The Green Team is the city's employee-led initiative to make city operations more sustainable. Casey Green Team helps develop policy, implement green initiatives, and educate employees about sustainability. Be sure to join Mayor Sly James and Olympic ice skating champions Merrill Davis and Charlie White as they flip the switch at the annual Mayor's Christmas Tree Lighting Ceremony. It's on Friday, November 25th at Crown Center. Each year, the Mayor's Christmas Tree Fund provides holiday meals and presents to local families. Ornaments are made and designed by Hallmark from the Mayor's Tree and are sold the following year to support the charitable fund. You can purchase this year's ornaments at customer service at Crown Center, or you can make a direct donation to the Mayor's Christmas Tree Fund at kcmayor.org donate. The tree is located next to the Ice Terrace and will be on display until mid-January. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with Kansas City Parks and Recreation. Every year, KC Parks plans a wide variety of winter holiday events, and this year is no exception. Santa's Wonderlands return to KC Parks the first weekend of December. Spend an evening celebrating with festive live music and entertainment by the Starlight Stars and Rock and Rob, light displays, and of course, a visit from Santa and his friends. The events are free and take place at Gillum Park on Friday, December 2nd from 6 to 8 p.m. and at Penguin Park on Saturday, December 3rd from 5.30 to 8 p.m. Details at caseyparks.org. Take a break from the present and experience a 19th century Christmas at the 20th annual visit from St. Nicholas on Saturday, December 3rd at the Shoal Creek Living History Museum. Enjoy a walking tour through holiday decorated homes and log cabins while reenactors bring the village to life. Experience a Civil War encampment, warm up by the pot bellied stove, and conclude your visit with a horse drawn sleigh ride through the rolling hills of Hodge Park. This event is $5 per person and free for those five years and under. Visit caseyparks.org for more information. The Fairy Princess reigns over the Kansas City Museum to spread cheer on the second and third weekends of December. Share holiday wishes with the princess, enjoy storytelling performances, hands-on activities, and take home a sweet treat. The cost is $10 per child. Visit kansascitymuseum.org for all the details. Do you like ugly Christmas sweaters? If so, you need to sign up for the Kris Kringle Ugly Sweater 5K on December the 10th. The wintry cross-country course will take you up and down hills, over fields, and through historic Swope Park. All of those pre-registered receive an ugly sweater with your entry fee. More at caseyparks.org. For more information about these and other events, visit the Parks and Recreation website at caseyparks.org or give us a call at 816-513-7500. If you've thrown something out the car window, raked debris into the street, or let your trash blow, the employees who operate Casey Waters Vac Trucks have probably pulled it from a catch basin. We find some of everything from skateboards, carpets, uh, car parts, uh, trees, branches, leaves, you name it, we found it in there. Each morning, Casey Waters sends out a fleet of trucks to vacuum debris from storm drain inlets. There are more than 55,000 inlets and catch basins all over Kansas City. Our goal is to clean 15,000 a year. 
Over the past five years, we've averaged over 17,000 a year. These inlets lead to either a body of water or a wastewater treatment plant. Keeping them clean keeps debris out of streams and rivers, reduces the amount of waste going into the wastewater treatment system, and helps prevent street flooding. Larry Willoughby is a senior operator. Our objective is to keep them clear, keep the lines open. Sometimes uh, we have that, uh, those heavy rains where we have an overflow or, say for instance, one might be just stopped up. We're the crew that they call when we have those situations. This is what workers typically find in a catch basin. That hole is a couple of feet deep and it's packed full of trash and leaves. To clean it out, the crew maneuvers this oversized vacuum hose into the hole and turns it on. It sucks up everything. Falling leaves make the biggest mess, but come wintertime, this work is especially important. Every now and then we have situations where some might back up uh, because of debris and uh, during the uh, winter season, it might ice up. So we have to find a way to get out there, uh, open up that line, and at the same time, clean the catch basin. You might not think a stick or a piece of wood could cause a problem until you look in this catch basin. Despite a city ordinance that prohibits homeowners from sweeping leaves and grass clippings into the street, this time of year causes the biggest problem. When we blow our leaves, it seems convenient to blow them all into the streets, but uh, you can create a hazard for yourself because those leaves are going to go somewhere. Uh, if it rains heavy, they're going in the drains. And if we can't get to your drain, or we can't get to that particular street, or we've passed that particular section of the map that we're working on, then you can create a serious problem. Sometimes crews get rerouted to an urgent call. We went on calls to get phones out of catch basins, uh, uh, keys out of catch basins. Uh, you know, they're, 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 they're important things that you know, people, they may be unaware of that we do those type of services. So before you rake, throw, or sweep something into the street, please think about where it will ultimately go. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities, here to give you a glimpse of some of the upcoming events taking place at your Kansas City facilities. Live from Broadway, The Illusionist will perform at the Music Hall November 15th through November 20th. A show for audiences of all ages. This mind-blowing spectacular showcases the jaw-dropping talents of seven of the most incredible illusionists on earth with the most outrageous and astonishing acts ever to be seen on stage. The show is packed with stunning acts of magic such as Grand Illusion, Levitation, and Mind Reading, as well as a full view underwater escape. For ticket information and show times, go to Ticketmaster.com. The 37th Annual Gear for Sports Warehouse will be held for the first time at the Exhibition Hall at Municipal Auditorium from November 15th through November 20th. Free and open to the public, the warehouse sale features Famous Maker Sports Gear at 80% off retail prices. For additional information, go to gearforsports.com. Car enthusiast, listen up. Stop by the city's Barta Hall from December 1st through December 3rd for the Meekum High Performance December Auction, where you can buy, sell, or view 750 collector cars. Meekum Auction is the world leader in live auctions of collector cars, classic cars, Corvettes, hot rods, street rods, and muscle cars. For more information, visit Meekum.com. The Book of Mormon comes to the Music Hall December 6th through December 11th. Winner of nine Tony Awards, including Best Musical, this outrageous tour de force follows the adventures of a mismatched pair of missionaries sent halfway across the world to spread the good word. This is not for younger audiences, as it contains explicit language. For tickets, go to the Municipal Box Office or visit Ticketmaster.com. To learn more about events taking place at Kansas City's Convention and Entertainment Facilities, visit KCConvention.com and click on the Events Calendar or call 
Today is the initial house that we're working on with the Love Thy Neighbor initiative. It's a collaboration of community groups, churches, the inaugural churches that came forward are Paseo Baptist and City of Truth, Pastor Ely and Pastor 83, along with city staff Deletta Dean and Sean. We identified senior citizens with outstanding warrants for code violations for home repair and uh, they've identified they were either physically or financially unable to make the repairs and needed support. Uh, we had support from the business community. J.E. Dunn sent contractors out. The carpenters, uh, Joe Hudson with the carpenters, sent his apprentices out. They provided all the materials and cut all the wood and did all the carpentry work, the skilled labor. So today when the volunteers came, the work was organized. All they had to do was come out and paint, remove brush, they're cutting trees down. We had 100 men in the Blue Hills that came and scraped the house before today to prep it. So uh, it was very well organized by staff. And Mrs. Uh, Hayden, the homeowner here, 84 years old, is elated about the support and the outpouring of love that she received today. So a great example of what happens when we love our neighbors. I'm always happy to do this kind of work. It gives me no greater joy than to contribute to the community. And you know, I spent so many hours in the housing court and it's all about prosecutions and adversarial relationships. I far prefer to go out and, and uh, combine with the community to, uh, in an effort like this. You know, this is interesting because Miss Hayden came through the housing court. She had a property maintenance issue. And we tried to channel her through the municipal court fund. And it's a great program. It's fully funded now. And it's going to do a lot of good work. But Miss Hayden didn't qualify for some technical reason. And she fit into this secondary program that. Uh, Councilwoman Kennedy has arranged and set up and worked very hard to, to put together. And so, I came out here to work on this. Judging by the way you work that paintbrush, this isn't your first rodeo. Not at all. I sort of take pride in the fact that I'm sort of a blue collar guy. When I went through law school, I painted a lot of houses to help support my family and, and to get through law school and undergrad. But I still paint, and uh, I'll be painting again here on projects like this, whenever I can. The stakeholders in this community came forward. We're going to be asking the same of other neighborhoods as well. This is a citywide problem, and in order for us to address it, it's going to take the whole city getting involved. And so we've got it organized. We just need the labor. And if you guys would step forward and help us do this, um, we can address uh, this community blight issue one house at a time. The crack of the bat and cheers from the kids fill Mulkey Park baseball fields on the city's west side. Thanks to the work of Casey Parks, the Kansas City Royals, Major League Baseball, the Cal Ripken Junior Foundation, Scott's Turf Management, and the Kansas City Junior Foundation. Field upgrades include an irrigation system, grass infield, and baseline improvements. The fields were given a makeover in 2012 thanks to the Major League Baseball and the All-Star Game that was held in Kansas City that summer. I'm a big believer that uh, kids that are on teams aren't gangs. Uh, so everything that we do uh, together as a team to promote things that are great for the kids of this city, uh, baseball, whatever it is, is a good thing. So here we have a dedication of a park that people like Scott's contributed to, to do all of the turf and uh, get these kids back playing baseball. It's always great when we have things that kids can do that are safe and fun and teach them life lessons. <laughs> Due to the Thanksgiving holiday on Thursday, November 24th, curbside trash and recycling collection for residents who usually have Thursday or Friday service will be delayed one day of that week. The fall leaf and brush collection continues as the second round of pickups begin the week of November 28th in the South Zone. Leaf pickup in the Central Zone will be the week of December 5th and the North Zone pickup will be the week of December 12th. Remember, residents may leave up to 20 bags or bundles of leaves and brush on your curb on your regular trash pickup day. The city's leaf and brush drop-off sites are also now open. The sites are located at 
11660 North Main, 1815 North Choteau Trafficway, and 10301 Raytown Road. Drop-off is free to residents on Saturdays with identification. For more information about Leaf and Brush, visit kcmo.gov and search Leaf and Brush. Holiday activities abound throughout the city. This year, you can eat and shop, tour downtown condos, and even more at Downtown Dazzle on the first three weekends of December. So check out the website at downtowndazzle.com and come ride the streetcar or a special trolley shuttle for free during these festive events. And don't forget, while you're taking in all the fun, be sure to show off your photographic talents by sharing your pictures with us. Selfies of your smiling face or your snapshots of holiday decorated Kansas City landmarks could be featured on our social media channels. Email to communications at kcmo.org with holiday photos written in the subject line. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. To view this program again or other Channel 2 videos, go to kcmo.gov and search Channel 2. That page has a link to our YouTube channel and all of our great programs that you can view on demand. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.